Stephen Johnson, Fort Worth Star Telegram, just picked up the uh, the beat covering TCU football. Joins us now, Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. Stephen, welcome, welcome to Fort Worth. And uh, do you have connections to Texas? Is your first time working in Texas? What's your background there? Well, it's, the funny thing is, and I appreciate you for bringing me on to the show, uh, Memphis is my hometown, but I was actually born here in Texas, and uh, I was born in Carrollton. We, we were only here for a couple of years, so I guess in a way it's a little bit of a, of a homecoming for me. I have an uncle here, and, uh, you know, a lot of Memphis people end up moving down to BFW, so I have a lot of friends and family down here, so it's been an easy transition for me. All right, uh, quarterback competition. Uh, Max Duggan, he's the veteran. Chandler Morris, who torched Baylor last year in that one game. Um, your thoughts, Sam Jackson? What Where are they right now in that depth chart? Uh, personally, I, I think that they made the, their decision today. I think Chandler will be the guy who will be the starter. Um, I, I wouldn't – it wouldn't be crazy to say all three will play. I don't think, you know, they'll be rotating every one of them every single game. But I think there will be certain packages that maybe – Max will have a chance for, and I know for a fact that Sam will definitely have his own packages, whether he's going to end up at running back or even in the slot or something like that. They really want to find ways to get him on the field and get him the ball. But I think when it's all said and done, Chandler's going to be the guy. He's been the most consistent. I think he's gotten the most work with the first team. So I, I think he kind of has the edge right now, and they can make a decision anytime this week or maybe next. How much is it? Is it just kind of maybe more of a scheme fit for what they're doing with Sonny than they were before? Yeah, I think I think Sonny, when I had a chance to sit down with Sonny, he said something about Chandler, just said Chandler, just something about his instinct and how he just reminded him of some of the other quarterbacks he's coached in the past, whether he was a head coach or offense coordinator. So I think Chandler just really fits with what Sonny wants his offense to look like, what he wants it to be. Um, he said he wants his quarterback to be the point guard and distribute the ball. They have a lot of pretty good receivers here. So I think Chandler's been the most accurate, especially in kind of that intermediate downfield type of passing. So I think Chandler just really fits, and obviously he can move a, move a bit, but I think when Chandler moves, he, he's looking to kind of extend the play and find more open receivers as opposed to necessarily take off like Max. So I just think all of those things kind of make him a little bit more of an ideal fit for the system that Sonny wants to run. Steven, what, have, what has the talk been like in terms of expectations for TCU, or has there been much talk about that? I mean, they're a team that you're going to commonly find probably in the middle to back of the pack in terms of you know where they're voted in the Big 12 as it stands, but it seems on paper to be a team that could certainly you know make some things interesting. Do you get any sort of a sense on, on where their confidence level lies as far as this first year under Sonny Dykes? Oh, it's honestly funny because, you know, most of the time, you know, fans and people like that have kind of outsized expectations for their team. I, TCU kind of feels like one of those teams where everybody has kind of similar expectations. You know, things are the right way. Maybe this is a team that can improve by two to three wins. I don't think anybody's really thinking right now they're ready to contend or compete for a Big 12 title, even though there might be a lot of parity in the league. So they're a team I think they'll be better than the record they had last year. I think they'll be the team or two that maybe they won't be favored against. But right now it's looking like this will be a team that I think will be pretty strong offensively. They have a lot of experience in the offensive line, um, a lot of talent at both the raw running back and wide receiver position. And if the defense can adjust and get up to speed with Joe Gillespie's three three five defense, I mean, you know, we know how bad that unit was last year. So if they can take a nice step in terms of improvement, I think, you know, I think TC is going to be a bowl team. I think that's really the expectation. You know, get to a bowl game. Hey, maybe you beat a Texas, or maybe you get into Oklahoma, and maybe upset upset one of the top teams. But expectations have been pretty reasonable from the people I've kind of talked to. Your thoughts about what you see, and you knew he was good, and Travis Hodges, Tomlinson at cornerback, possibly an All American candidate. It's not possible; he's an All American candidate. Mm -hmm. Well, that's been kind of been one of the bummers of fall camp. He's missed a lot of time. Well, I think he's dealing with like a. Lower foot and ankle injury. Uh, Dice updated the media that he's still expecting him to kind of either be back next week or, you know, he doesn't think he'll miss Colorado. So I haven't gotten a chance to see much of him in person aside from maybe those first couple of days when they weren't in pass. But from everybody I talked to, they talk about his genes. They said he's kind of, he's like a film junkie. He's very physical at the line of scrimmage. So hopefully he's back next week and I'll get to get to watch him a little bit more. What's been the, uh, What's the biggest uh, thing that jumps out of you that people may not realize about this TCU team this year? Hmm. I, I think it's the offensive line. Um, they've kind of, if there was an MVP of fall camp so far, just going off what we've been told and kind of what we've been seeing, 
I, I would say it's the offensive line. They feel really strong about that group. They feel like they're already at having eight to ten guys that they can have in their rotation. Steve Avila, they brought in uh, Alan Ali from SNU, Brandon Coleman. They have a lot of experience on that offensive line, especially on the left side. I think um, I think that's going to be the strength of the team. And right now, if, if they perform how they've been performing in camp, I think that's going to be one of the reasons you see TCU have one of the best offenses in the Big 12. So I would definitely go with the offensive line right now. Steven, do you have much knowledge or did you have much knowledge coming in of, of Gary Patterson and kind of his tenure in Fort Worth to get any type of an idea on, on just how different maybe the players feel this time around versus what they've been accustomed to the last few years? Yeah, I mean, I, I consider myself a big college football fan. I really started following TCU closely. I have obviously when they made the jump to the Big 12. I remember that 2014 team with uh, – Trayvon Boykin and oh, yeah. some of those other guys. I remember that game they played against, down against Baylor. That's one of those kind of those all time games. But mm -hmm. just talking to people, you can kind of tell that as much as they appreciate what Gary did, obviously he's you know a legendary coach. They needed a new voice. You know, there are a lot of you know differences, even from the, like the music they're playing their practices. They said Gary used to always play his music. Now you're hearing you know you're hearing nineties rock. You're hearing current rap music a lot of different things. So I think the energy is just totally different, and especially his media policy. Dice's media policy is much different. Uh, we've been able to watch the first hour of every single practice except for the scrimmage. I, I, I've, been, I've been told that wasn't the case with Gary. Uh, we've been able to talk to true freshmen. We've been able to talk to so many guys on the roster that, you know, people on the sideline tell me that I'm basically in the golden era of access when it comes to <laughs> TCU. So the program is, uh, is more energetic. There's a lot more access. And right now, Gary, I mean, there's a lot. I, I think the energy is a lot better as well, too. Yeah, Stephen, uh, we'll tell you some stories off the air one day when we when we meet. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you've heard some. But uh, when mm -hmm. you say Gary played his music, you don't mean him, right? Because he had some albums. Oh, I, I hope not. <laughs> but from what I've been told, it was over <laughs> his personal albums that were on his iPhone. And I don't think many of the players or the coaches really enjoyed it. But now <laughs> it's like... <laughs> You'll see players out there dancing, whether it's old music, current music or not. I think that, like I said, that's just one of the many examples. Some of those smaller things, and even nutrition is another thing I think players really constantly talk about. That's kind of just changed under dice that could kind of help you have a, have a successful year this year. Stephen Johnson covers TCU, the Fort Worth, Tele Tele Fort Worth Star Telegram, 365 Sports and YouTube. Stephen, the uh – the Big 12, the way it is, and and you were covering, you're from Texas, as you mentioned, but you were covering Memphis. Were you there last fall enough involved in what Memphis thought might happen to them if realignment took another step in the Big 12? Yeah, Memphis was really hoping that they were going to get that call. Obviously, that didn't happen. And right now, Memphis is going there. I believe it's $150 million renovation to the, to the Liberty Bowl, to the old stadium, historical stadium, I guess, kind of not too far from the university. They barely need to make over. So right now, I, I got to think that the fact that they kind of missed that first wave of realignment has really kind of – that spearheaded that move to kind of modernize that. It's funny, they actually kind of – they're basing some of their renovations off what TCU did with their own stadium. So Memphis is trying to do what it can to kind of – uplift the football team and make itself as, attra as attractive as possible for maybe the next wave of realignment. But obviously, you know, with all this stuff with the Big Ten, the Pac-12, that's kind of put them in a kind of in a, in a tough situation where they could easily get left out again. Following up on that, Stephen, has that infiltrated TCU talk much, the uh, realignment stuff? I mean, obviously the Big 12's in a, an interesting spot with a new commissioner and trying to – you know, keep their bearings and stay the, the third best conference, if you will. But has there been much talk about that in, in Fort Worth? Uh, not too much. I, it, and the talk that I have heard is it's been really positive. Obviously, you know, being – they're trying – TCU is kind of trying to promote itself as DFW's Big 12 team. So being in this market and eventually when Oklahoma and Texas lead, they feel like they're in a really good position to where, as we know, there are going to be a lot of teams battling to kind of replace those two powerhouse programs. TCU feels like they're they're in a position where they could be one of the teams that could contend and kind of maybe take over that that vacuum that's going to get created. But from all the talks I've heard, you know, they feel good about it. They feel confident that whenever the time comes and the Big Twelve has to expand, that the Big Twelve might have an advantage maybe over the Pac twelve and adding some of those teams 
that are left over on the West Coast. Open up at Colorado, then they have Tarleton, SMU, and that got to be a pretty good rivalry because of not because Dallas and Fort Worth, yes, but because of man, they've gone after each other the last couple of years. And then Oklahoma mm-hmm. opens up their Big Twelve season to start October as well. Stephen, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. And welcome to Texas or back to Texas. Yeah, I appreciate you guys for bringing me on. Yep. Stephen Johnson, Fort Worth Star Telegram covering TCU. Drew Davidson covered them for the longest of time and now doing other work for the uh, newspaper. And so Stephen Johnson giving us an insight on TCU. That's that's not good news. I, I, it would be okay. Travis Hodges Tomlinson with a lower leg type issue, but – Man, he's a hell of a player. They sure don't want to see him miss any time. No, he's a, he's a difference maker. Absolutely. Sure. When we come back, the 4 o'clock hour, 